This lesson is for adding and subtracting rational expressions. We'll start off with common denominators. When they are the same, then you add or subtract the numerators and you leave the denominators unchanged. In order to add and subtract fractions, they need to have the same denominator, so keep the denominators the same after you add and subtract. For the first example, the direction is to add or subtract and we have to identify any x values for which the expression is undefined. I'll start off with the exclusions, realizing they are values that make division by zero. So in other words, I took x plus four, I didn't want it to be zero, and I use whatever algebra to find out whatever x values that would be. So I proceed with the problem already having common denominators, I make it just one denominator, and then I operate using the plus sign. So I have the first numerator added with the second numerator. Simplifying like terms, I have 2x minus 5 all over x plus 4, and with my exclusion from the beginning and my sum of rational expressions, I have my final answer. Please note that I will always check to see if I could factor my final answer and maybe reveal a common factor between the numerator and the denominator that I could then divide out. In the next example, I begin like before, preventing division by zero by setting the denominator equal to zero, or different than zero. Notice that I can't factor x squared plus one. It is not a difference of squares. So I need to use the square root property. And then take the positive and negative square root of both sides. And the square root of negative one is defined as i. So I'll go ahead and box that. That will be part of my answer. I continue with the original difference of rational expressions. The denominators are already the same, so I make them common between the two. And then I will subtract numerators. Notice I use parentheses around the second fraction's numerator because I must distribute the negative sign like a negative 1 to each term to the right of the subtraction. So I have 3x minus 4 minus 6x minus 1, noting that all the signs changed. Combining like terms, negative 3x minus 5 all over x squared plus 1. No factoring, no further simplification, and with our exclusions from the beginning, we have the final answer. What happens when you start with uncommon denominators? Before you can add and subtract, you have to find the least common multiple of the denominators, known as the least common denominator, or LCD. Again, in our direction is to identify any x values for which the expression is undefined but I'll follow something kind of like the Fed, where I want to factor, exclude, and then divide. So I'll start off by factoring the first term's denominator, the factors of negative 4 that sum to positive 3 are positive 4 and negative 1. Notice I simply rewrite that denominator in factored form right underneath that term. That helps keep rewriting too much information. Now that everything is factored, I will state my exclusions before proceeding. I realize that negative 4 I need to exclude, positive 1, and negative 4 again, don't write repeats. I need to make common denominators before I could add and subtract. Right now, I have a tie between the x plus 4s, so then I will take 1 to represent 
and I have a unique factor of x minus 1, so that is the LCD. And please note, I could have selected my LCDs as from that denominator and the factor x minus 1. It doesn't matter where you pull it from. So that's the LCD. So now I rewrite the whole fraction with the LCD in the denominator. And before I forget, let's uh, box our exclusions. That will be part of our answer. Now here's the trick to make equivalent fractions. I will multiply this numerator by any factor of the other term's denominator that the first fraction doesn't have already in its denominator. Please note that we have all the factors in the first denominator that the second denominator is contributing. Therefore, I don't make any modifications to the first fraction's numerator. So in other words, off to the side here, the first fraction has the least common denominator, so I will not modify it. The second fraction, however, please notice that it only contributed the x plus 4 to the least common denominator. The other term's fraction has an x plus 4. So right now we have 2x and x plus 4. To make an equivalent fraction with the common denominator of x plus 4, x minus 1, then I need to multiply the denominator by x minus 1 as well as the numerator by x minus 1. It's just a fancy version of 1, so it doesn't change the actual value. But the shortcut is, because we already have the x plus 4, x minus 1 as the common denominator, then I just use the operation in between the fractions, adding the numerator, and then multiplying it by what it was missing in its denominator. Because notice, here I have common denominators, so then they will stay the same after you add or subtract. And then I just take the numerators and I operate on them. So to simplify, I distribute. Keep the denominator in factored form. Combine like terms and write in descending order. It looks like that numerator is going to factor. So for a final answer, for full credit, I need to have a fully simplified rational expression. In this case, that will require that I investigate the numerator to see if it's a prime polynomial or not. Using pattern recognition factoring, I realize that the factors of 2x squared are 2x and x, and the factors of negative 3 are 3 and 1, or 1 and 3 but I need the inner and outer products to multiply to a negative x. That being said, if I put a 3 here and a 1 there, that will give me 1 as the inner product and 6 as the outer. That's very far away from my target of negative 1. So instead, I'll go 3 and 1 now with an inner product of 3x and an outer product of 2x, I could just adjust the signs making the 3 negative and the 1 positive. So it's a negative 3x and a positive 2x, which sums the middle term's coefficient. That's basically just looking at the inner and outer products of foiling. So that is the numerator. Bring along the denominator. Noting that... We did not find any common factors between the two, 
So I could either go back here and write that as my final answer, or you could box the fully factored form as your final answer. Either will be correct. We already boxed our exclusions, so we completed the problem. Notice in our next example that the second denominator is not in descending order. So I want to rewrite, and also I'll go ahead realizing the first denominator, a GCF of 2, factors out. And in the second denominator, I will change the order so it's in standard form, descending. And whenever the leading coefficient is negative, I factor it out. So now I can clearly see what our exclusions are, 2 and 2. So I'll just write that once and box it for good. From here, I could handle this denominator here. That negative can replace that plus. So I could change the problem into a subtraction. Now my denominator is very clear, and I could start finding the LCD. So we got x minus 2, and you have a 2. Right away, I will write the LCD, and then I'll adjust the numerators. It's like keeping up with the Joneses. This first fraction in its denominator has all parts of the LCD, so I don't need to multiply its numerator by anything. The second fraction, however, is missing the factor of 2 that the first fraction contributed. So to like, keep up with the Joneses, whereas the first fraction bought a Benz, and the second fraction has a Hyundai, then the second fraction, to its numerator, you need to multiply by the missing factor of the LCD. In other words, what do you multiply x minus 2 to get 2 times x minus 2? The answer is just 2. Simplify. So 5 minus 6 is negative 1. With the exclusions, we arrive at our final answer. For the next problem, we factor the second denominator. It's a difference of squares. We exclude. Box that for safekeeping. And then realize that the LCD is x plus 2. They have that in common, so just select it once. And x minus 2. So I make that the common denominator. And now I adjust numerators. This first fraction is missing the x minus 2 factor. So I must multiply the numerator by the x minus 2 factor. So kind of visually, like whatever's here goes there. And if there's anything in the first term's denominator that the second fraction doesn't have, then you multiply it across. The second fraction contributed all pieces to the LCD equally, so addition of negative 8 is simply just minus 8. Distribute the x. Before I box my answer, I want to inspect to see if the numerator factors. The factors of negative 8 that sum to negative 2 are negative 4 and positive 2. So I believe we will find a common factor with the denominator. So it's a good thing I checked because I want to write my rational expression in fully factored form. 
So I divide out like factors. I've already excluded up here, so that's not a problem. I won't miss any exclusions that I should make. So the final answer, x minus 4 on x minus 2. Now, I don't need the parentheses anymore because the fraction bar itself is a grouping symbol. So it groups this numerator with that denominator, so then the parentheses become redundant. In the final example, the direction is to subtract, and we want to do any exclusions where appropriate. So we start off by factoring. We can do so in the numerator and denominator, so I will rewrite the problem as I go. GCF first in the first fraction's numerator. Difference of squares. No factoring for the second fraction. After factoring, I'll do exclusions before proceeding. I have to prevent it from being negative 3, positive 3, and negative 3, so positive or negative 3. I need to identify what our least common multiple of the factors in the denominator will be, known as the least common, multi uh, least common denominator. So an x plus 3, and this is tied, so I don't need another copy, and then x minus 3. Let's grab those exclusions while we're thinking about it. That'll be part of our final answer. Now, this x squared minus 15 does not factor. Since it does not break down any further to reveal any common factors that could have divided out originally, then I will simply distribute back through that too. And now I will subtract this second fraction, distributing the negative. So change all the signs to the right. So that is now negative. Do not forget that. Remember, in the first subtraction example, we wrote it like this to show the distribution as if this is like a negative 1. Combine like terms. Write the answer in descending order. The numerator may factor. Let's inspect. By pattern recognition, the factors of 2x squared are 2x and x. The factors of negative 35 that would work if anything will are 7 and 5. So my inner product is 7x. My outer product is 10x. That does not get me a middle term coefficient of negative x. So let me swap the 5 and the 7. So now I got 14 and 5, even farther away from the goal of negative 1. And no way will the factors of negative 35 the 1 and the 35 in any combination could uh, possibly give us the negative 1 coefficient. So it does not factor any further. We have our exclusions box, and then we'll box this as our answer.